Pediatric Nursing 3 Question 1. The parents of a child, age 6, who will begin school in the fall ask the nurse for anticipatory guidance. The nurse should explain that a child of this age a. Still depends on the parents. b. Rebels against scheduled activities. c. Is highly sensitive to criticism. d. Loves to tattle. Answer. c. In a six-year-old child. A precarious sense of self causes overreaction to criticism and a sense of inferiority. By age six, most children no longer depend on the parents for daily tasks and love the routine of a schedule. Tattling is more common at age four to five. By age six, the child wants to make friends and be a friend. Question 2. While preparing to discharge an eight-month-old infant who is recovering from gastroenteritis and dehydration, the nurse teaches the parents about their infant's dietary and fluid requirements. The nurse should include which other topic in the teaching session? A. Nursery schools B. Toilet draining C. Safety guidelines D. Preparation for surgery Pediatric Nursing 3 Answer C. The nurse always should reinforce safety guidelines when teaching parents how to care for their child. By giving anticipatory guidance the nurse can help prevent many accidental injuries. For parents of a nine-month-old infant, it is too early to discuss nursery schools or toilet draining. Because surgery is not used to gastroenteritis, this topic is inappropriate. Question 3. Nurse Bettina should begin screening for lead poisoning when a child reaches which age? A. 6 months B. 12 months C. 18 months D. 24 months Answer C. In a six year. Question 2. While preparing to discharge an eight month old infant who is recovering from gastroenteritis and dehydration, the nurse teaches the parents about their infant's dietary and fluid requirements. The nurse should include which other topic in the teaching session? A. Nursery schools. B. Toilet draining. C. Safety guidelines. D. Preparation for surgery. Pediatric Nursing 3. Answer C. The nurse always. Answer D. The body compensates for metabolic acidosis via the respiratory system, which tries to eliminate the buffered acids by increasing alveolar ventilation through deep, rapid respirations. Altered white blood cell or platelet counts are not specific signs of metabolic imbalance. Answer C. In a six year old child. A precarious sense of self causes overreaction to criticism and a sense of inferiority. By age six, most children no longer depend on the parents for daily tasks and love the routine of a schedule. Tattling is more common at age four to five. By age six, the child wants to make friends and be a friend. Question 2. While preparing to discharge an eight-month-old infant who is recovering from gastroenteritis and dehydration, 
the nurse teaches the parents about their infant's dietary and fluid requirements. The nurse should include which other topic in the teaching session? A. Answer C. The nurse always should reinforce safety guidelines when teaching parents how to care for their child. By giving anticipatory guidance, the nurse can help prevent many accidental injuries. For parents of a nine-month-old infant, it is too early to discuss nursery schools or toilet training. Because surgery is not used to gastroenteritis, this topic is inappropriate. Answer D. The body compensates. Answer C. In a six year old child, a precarious sense of self causes overreaction to criticism and a sense of inferiority. By age six, most children no longer depend on the parents for daily tasks and love the routine of a schedule. Tattling is more common at age four to five. <laughs> Question 2. While preparing to discharge an 8-month-old infant who is recovering from gastroenteritis and dehydration, the nurse teaches the parents about their infant's dietary and fluid requirements. The nurse should include which other topic in the teaching session? A. Nursery schools. B. Toilet draining. C. Safety guide. Answer. D. The body compensates for metabolic acidosis via the respiratory system, which tries to eliminate the buffered acids by increasing alveolar ventilation through deep, rapid respirations. Altered white blood cell or platelet counts are not specific signs of metabolic imbalance. Question 2. While preparing to discharge. Answer. D. The body compensates for metabolic acidosis via the respiratory system, which tries to eliminate the buffered acids by increasing alveolar ventilation through deep, rapid respirations. Altered white blood cell or platelet counts are not specific signs of metabolic imbalance. Answer C. In a six year old child, a precarious sense of self causes overreaction to criticism and a sense of inferiority. By age six, most children no longer depend on the parents for daily tasks and love the routine of a schedule. Tattling is more common at age four to five. By age six, the child wants to make friends and be a friend.
Answer A. The best recommendation is to allow the child to feed herself because the child's stage of development is the preschool period of initiative. Special dishes would enhance the primary recommendation. The child should be offered new foods and choices, not just served her favorite foods. Using a small table and chair would also enhance the primary recommendation. Question 11. Nurse Roy is administering total parental nutrition TPN through a peripheral IV line to a school-aged child. What's the smallest amount of glucose that's considered safe and not caustic to small veins, while also providing adequate TPN? A. 5% glucose. B. 10% glucose. C. 15% glucose. D. 17% glucose. Answer C. In a six year old child, a precarious sense of self causes overreaction to criticism and a sense of inferiority. By age six, most children no longer depend on the parents for daily tasks and love the routine of a schedule. Tattling is more common at age 4 to 5. By age 6, the child wants to make... Answer A. The best recommendation. Answer D. One of the most valuable clues to pain is a behavior change. A child who's pain free likes to play. A child in pain is less likely to consume food or fluids. An increased heart rate may indicate increased pain, decrease during output may signify dehydration. Question 13. When planning care for a eight-year-old boy with Down syndrome, the nurse should a. Plan interventions according to the developmental level of a seven-year-old child because that's the child's age. b. Plan interventions according to the developmental levels of a five-year-old because the child will have developmental delays. c. Assess the child's current developmental level and plan care accordingly. D. Direct all teaching to the parents because the child can't understand. Answer C. Nursing care plan should be planned according to the developmental age of a child with Down syndrome, not the chronological age because children with Down syndrome can vary from mildly to severely mentally challenged. Each child should be individually assessed. A child with Down syndrome is capable of learning, especially a child with mild limitations. Question 14. Nurse Victoria is teaching the parents of a school-aged child. Which teaching topic should take priority? A. Prevent accidents. B. Keeping a nightlight on to allay fears. C. Explaining normalcy of fears about body integrity. D. Encouraging the child to dress without help. Answer A. Accidents are the major cause of death and disability during the school age years. Therefore, Accident prevention should take priority when teaching parents of school-aged children. Preschool not school-aged children are afraid of the dark, have fears concerning body integrity, and should be encouraged to dress without help with the exception of tying shoes. Question 15. The nurse is finishing her shift on the pediatric unit. Because her shift is ending, which intervention takes top priority? A. 
changing the linens on the client's beds. B. Restocking the bedside supplies needed for addressing change on the upcoming shift. C. Documenting the care provided during her shift. D. Emptying the trash cans in the assigned client room. Answer. C. Nursing care plan. Answer. C. Documentation should take top priority. Documentation is the only way the nurse can legally claim that interventions were performed. The other three options would be appreciated by the nurses on the oncoming shift but aren't mandatory and don't take priority over documentation. Question 16. Nurse Alice is providing cardiopulmonary resuscitation CPR to a child, age 4. The nurse should A. Compress the sternum with both hands at a depth of 1 and 1 half to 2 4 to 5 centimeters. B. Deliver 12 breaths, minute. C. Perform only two-person CPR. D. Use the heel of one hand for sternal compressions. Answer. D. The nurse should use the heel of one hand and compress one to one and one half. The nurse should use the heels of both hands clasped together and compress the sternum one and one half to two for an adult. For a small child, two-person rescue may be inappropriate. For a child, the nurse should deliver 20 breaths, minute instead of 12. Question 17. A four-month-old with meningococcal meningitis has just been admitted to the pediatric unit. Which nursing intervention has the highest priority? A. Instituting droplet precautions. B. Administering acetaminophen Tylenol. C. Obtaining history information from the parents. D. Orienting the parents to the pediatric unit. <laughs> Answer A. Instituting droplet precautions is a priority for a newly admitted infant with meningococcal meningitis. Acetaminophen may be prescribed but administering it doesn't take priority over instituting droplet precautions. Obtaining history information and orienting the parents to the unit don't take priority. Question 18. Sheena tells the nurse that she wants to begin toilet draining her 22-month-old child. The most important factor for the nurse to stress to the mother is a. Developmental readiness of the child b. Consistency in approach c. The mother's positive attitude d. Developmental level of the child's peers Question 17. A four-month-old with meningococcal meningitis has just been admitted to the pediatric unit. Which nursing intervention has the highest priority? A. Instituting droplet precautions. B. Administering acetaminophen Tylenol. C. Obtaining history information from the parents. Question 19. An infant who has been in foster care since birth requires a blood transfusion. Who is authorized to give written, informed consent for the procedure? A. The foster mother. B. The social worker who placed the infant in the foster home. C. The registered nurse caring for the infant. D. The nurse manager. Answer A. When children are minors and aren't emancipated, their parents or designated legal guardians are responsible for providing consent for medical procedures. Therefore, the foster mother is authorized to give consent for the blood transfusion. The social workers, the nurse, and the nurse manager have no legal rights to give consent in this scenario. 
Question 20. A child is undergoing remission induction therapy to treat leukemia. Allopurinol is included in the regimen. The main reason for administering allopurinol as part of the client's chemotherapy regimen is to a. Prevent metabolic breakdown of xanthine to uric acid. b. Prevent uric acid from precipitating in the ureters. c. Enhance the production of uric acid to ensure adequate excretion of urine. d. Ensure that the chemotherapy doesn't adversely affect the bone marrow. Answer A. Accidents are the major cause of death and disability during the school age years. Therefore, accident prevention should take priority when teaching parents of school age children. Preschool, not school age children, are afraid of the dark have fears concerning body integrity, and should be encouraged to dread. Question 21. A 10-year-old client contracted severe acute respiratory syndrome SARS when traveling abroad with her parents. The nurse knows she must put on personal protective equipment to protect herself while providing care. Based on the mode of SARS transmission, which personal protective should the nurse wear? A. Gloves. B. Gown and gloves. C. Gown, gloves, and mask. D. Gown, gloves, mask, and eye goggles or eye shield. Question 20. A child is undergoing remission induction therapy to treat leukemia. Allopurinol is included in the regimen. The main reason for administering allopurinol as part of the client's chemotherapy regimen is to a. Prevent metabolic breakdown of xanthine to uric acid b. Prevent uric acid from precipitating in the ureter Answer A. Accidents are the main. Answer C. In a six year old child, a precarious sense of self causes overreaction to criticism and a sense of inferiority. By age six, most children no longer depend on the parents for daily tasks and love the routine of a schedule. Tattling is more common at age four to five. By age six, the child wants to make friends and be a friend. Question 23. Nurse Oliver is teaching a mother who plans to discontinue breastfeeding after five months. The nurse should advise her to include which foods in her infant's diet? A. Iron-rich formula and baby food. B. Whole milk and baby food. C. Skim milk and baby food. D. Iron rich formula only. Answer D. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that infants at age 5 months receive iron rich formula and that they shouldn't receive solid food, even baby food, until age 6 months. The Academy doesn't recommend whole milk until age 12 months and skim milk until after age two years.
Question 23. Nurse Oliver is teaching a mother who plans to discontinue breastfeeding after five months. The nurse should advise her to include which foods in her infant's diet? A. Iron rich formula and baby food. B. Whole milk and baby food. C. Skim milk and baby food. D. Answer D. The American Academy. Question 23. Nurse Oliver Press. Answer D. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that infants at age 5 months receive iron-rich formula and that they shouldn't receive solid food, even baby food, until age 6 months. The Academy doesn't recommend whole milk until age 12 months, and skim milk until after age 2 years. Answer A. When children are minors and aren't emancipated, their parents or designated legal guardians are responsible for providing consent for medical procedures. Therefore, the foster mother is authorized to give consent for the blood transfusion. The social workers, the nurse, and the nurse manager have no legal rights to give consent in this scenario. Answer D. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that infants at age 5 months receive iron-rich formula and that they shouldn't receive solid food, even baby food, until age 6 months. The Academy doesn't recommend whole milk until age 12 months, and skim milk until after age 2 years. Question 17. A four-month-old with meningococcal meningitis has just been admitted to the pediatric unit. Which nursing intervention has the highest priority? A. 
instituting droplet precautions. B. Administering acetaminophen Tylenol. C. Obtaining history information from the parents. D. Orienting the parents. Answer. C. Nursing care plan. Question 18. Sheena tells the nurse that she wants to begin toilet draining her 22-month-old child. The most important factor for the nurse to stress to the mother is A. Developmental readiness of the child B. Consistency in approach Question 15. The nurse is finishing her shift on the pediatric unit. Because her shift is ending, which intervention takes top priority? A. Changing the linens on the client's beds. B. Restocking the bedside supplies needed for addressing change on the upcoming shift. C. Documenting the care provided during her shift. D. Emptying the trash cans in the assigned client room. Answer. A. Itching underneath the cast can be relieved by directing blow dyer, set, on the cool setting, toward the itch area. Skin breakdown can occur if anything is placed under the cast. Therefore, the client should be cautioned not to put any object down the cast in an attempt to scratch. Answer, D. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends.